comments. In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the possession of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. First comment comes from Jonathan Todd. And they say, I've been watching our cakes videos for over a year as well. He does have a zero tolerance policy for people he may possibly view as hostile or bringing negativity to his channel. What he claims as evidence are several books and authors' historical works that seem to suggest mathematical regularity throughout history. I would enjoy a reaction video, though nothing on our cakes is the author's first-hand eyewitness testimony. I agree. And I did make a reaction video to it. And this guy, uh, the guy you see in the thumbnail right up there, Jason Bree Shears, he actually came to my YouTube channel and commented saying he was, in so many words, he said he was ready for the reaction video, like bring it on or whatever it was he said. And then after I published the video, I didn't hear anything from him. Now, the reason I did it is because I have been following um, Brashears and his simulation theory. And he's always basically telling everybody, oh, I come with the facts. You know, I, have, I can back up everything I say with evidence. When he's talking about evidence, he's just talking about adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble books. He has no first-hand knowledge, as, uh, as Jonathan said here. He has no first-hand knowledge of any of it. And on top of that, he's a sex offender. So... <laughs> I don't know. You know, I started looking into it, and when you start digging and looking into something, you start finding some things out. And the guy has so many subscribers and views. He's way out of my ballpark. I'm not even a blip on that guy's radar. I'm not even a, a flea on on his dog's coat. You know, he he probably could give two craps about somebody like me. So. Next comments uh, for the Pascal. He says, I appreciate your focus on how you certify what a fact is. And then someone else says, why are you using square brackets? No need. That ain't QG. And then I say, it's all about volition, ain't it? Is it your volition to use grammar modification or no? See, folks like Terrence Herming don't read the terms and conditions of the comments field they come into. And obviously has less than zero knowledge about correct sentence structure communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. Otherwise, they wouldn't be saying what they're saying. Next comment from Epic Lights, and they say, how about that? Thanks, Jason. Every day is a school day. There was no age of enlightenment. Oh, and that's a comment on the parse video about the word normal being a mason's box. Next comment comes from Property Geek, and they say, I lost the live feed chat and not sure if my comment got posted. So posting again after thinking about the biggest control psyop you mentioned. Whether the creator of the cosmos exists or not, the fact of the matter is the word God does. Therefore, if someone doesn't believe in God, they may believe in the word. Well, belief means no love. So all of that, God, belief, and all that's all just fiction anyways. So... Biggest control psyop, I, I said, is not God, it's religion, specifically monotheism. Next comment from R. Fortel, they say, I find his channel, meaning Brashears, 
interesting, but never saw any proof of his statements. The fact is that he has a huge quantity of followers. Yes. For the history, I should start with the Russian mathematician A.T. Fomenko. He comes with a lot of facts in his new chronology books. Well, I mean, when you say he comes with a lot of facts, I'll bet you dollars to donuts it's not a fact in the sense of that it can be proved. Fomenko comes with facts the same way the Brashears comes with facts, meaning they're based on adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble books that were published throughout history. Nothing to do with first-hand knowledge, I don't think. I am familiar with Fomenko. I began studying him back in 2005, 2006. Most anyone in that uh, domain I'm probably familiar with. Next comment comes from C.D. Mesker, and they say, Quantum grammar, okay, they put a colon and then a, a I'm sorry, they put a bracket and then a colon, quantum hyphen grammar, can certify a fact, 20th century philosophy, largely a mix of pragmatism and existentialism, has clouded the present day thinking. Epistemology, why did they put colon epistemology and then another colon after that? I'm not sure what the use of the colons signify here, being that it is in brackets and it's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. What can we know is both a personal construct of existentialism and it varies the pragmatic concept of truth. The truth can be modified. I disagree. Truth cannot be modified. Truth is truth. If it's not truth, then it's a lie. As in the case where new discovery creates new knowledge or a correction of past beliefs, that's different. That is, like you just said, a correction. It's not truth being modified. Like my dictionary, for example. I'm constantly adding new things to it. I'm updating it, correcting it as I go. I'm not modifying anything. My volition is not to modify anything. My volition is to keep it as correct as I possibly can. There is no modification, so that sounds like a correct sentence structure psychology uh, challenge for C.D. Mesker there, where they're thinking that truth can be modified, but it cannot, at least in the context through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. There is no modification. There is no change. It's stop and correct. It's... It's updating, it's things like that, that type of psychology. Necessarily, truth is not fact. There is a fact and value dichotomy whereby the criteria for determining fact is different from that of the value. Think, that is a good horse, and can you certify that? He wins his champion, but he won't buck you off. Um... I don't know about that. I mean, if you look at a piece of fruit and it's rotten, I mean, the value of something is what you ascribe to it. So facts can be the truth. You see what I'm saying? Nothing but quantum grammar can certify a fact, and this technology has changed the comprehension or framework for interpreting the word epistemology. Epistemology is no contract right off the bat because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. And also, that is not true that nothing but quantum grammar can certify a fact because I can tell you that this is an envelope, and you and I can certify that it is an envelope. I can hand it to you. You can take it, look at it, feel it, smell it, and you can certify that it's an envelope. Therefore, we just certified it's an envelope. We don't need correct sentence structure to do that. Correct sentence structure only comes in when there's bureaucratic trespass most of the time. So that is not true. We can certify facts without quantum grammar. What is the world? Metaphysics. What ought we do? Ethics. Hmm. And now you must discover the facts to know. Well, thank you for that comment. Next comments come from Jonathan Todd, and they say, I think I get it now. He's a storyteller, LOL, and even confesses to it in the beginning. 
I bet from Brashear's perspective, the carjacking went from right to wrong after the penalties increased from Grand Theft Auto or carjacking to more severe penalties for physically sexually assaulting people. Without reading the case, I don't know if he actually assaulting anyone or if he was charged as an accessory or something to that effect. I do know that he's spoken of the incident several times in his earlier videos and is likely sick of bringing it up. When people first hear about it, it usually triggers some sort of emotional reaction. But I try to focus on the message and not the messenger. Well, here's the thing. When you get people who are what we call regular people, normal people, people who don't rape, people who don't assault other people, people who don't do carjackings or robberies or anything like that or sexual assaults, when you get people who don't do things like that and then they see something like that, yes, of course, they, they have a certain reaction to it, to that energy, because that, those types of malicious things are repugnant to a regular person. So that's pretty much a normal type of uh, reaction to, to that. Regardless of whether you're trying to learn something or not, like just based on that alone, what I found out about Brashears, I, I don't subscribe to his channel anymore. I don't even want to see his face anymore uh, because of that, because of everything that I read about his past, his years in prison and his court cases and things like that. Um, it's just my position that I don't want to bring that energy around me, whether it's in video form or otherwise. Uh, okay. Next comment comes from Di Cameron, and Di says, who is the person in the thumbnail? Any relevance? And then uh, I think I responded, they're very relevant to me personally, because that is G.I. Gurdjieff, the teacher of the fourth way in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, which I studied for many years. Next comment comes from Dio, and they say, thanks for the video. I learned that a live life claim is three or more witnesses certifying that someone is a living, breathing creature. <laughs> the video didn't explain why someone would need to make a live life claim. Um, probably because I'm not here to tell you what you need to do. If you need people to tell you what you need to do, this is probably not the best place for you or the most beneficial place for you because this is a place where you have to make your own choices. You're not going to find someone that's going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do or what you need to do. Okay. That's why the video didn't explain that because it's not up to me to tell you what you need. Uh, you're a big boy or girl. I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. Why do you think who do you think is concerned if they're dealing with a live life versus a legal fiction? Well, that has to do with specific scenarios. And I don't know if anybody would be concerned about it. You're asking me what I think. So I don't think anybody would be concerned about it, actually. The exciting part for me comes when you use correct sentence structure and you know exactly what you're doing and you can stop that, that trespass comes to a dead stop. And the fiction doesn't want anything to do with you. They just want to get you out of their hair. And they don't want to talk to you ever again. And they stop bothering you. That's the cool part. But I don't think they're concerned about it. What would make you think that someone would be concerned about it? That's interesting. That's an inter interesting psychological mindset, Dio. Do you have a video that explains how a live life claim has benefited someone? Yeah. Countless videos. You sound like someone who hasn't watched but one or two of my videos. You got about 898 other videos to catch up on. If you're curious, I mean, which, I mean, I don't know. Do you have a video that explains why you would need to communicate in correct sentence structure when 99% of people don't understand what it is, so how using colons, hyphens, square brackets, and CSSG make a difference and the receiver of that communication will not be familiar with it? Yes. Yes, again. Uh, you obviously hasn't, haven't watched very many of my videos, so you're, I understand your ignorance uh, when it comes to this. I understand that you're ignorant, that you haven't studied anything. I do think that you're trolling, as a matter of fact. I, I do think that. And so the answer is yes. Yes, I do. I have lots of videos. 
Next comment comes from Lee Redford, and they say, it took Romley 100 years. None of these other grubs have ever been heard of. So it's what took Romley 100 years? So if it took Romley 100 years, whoa, he must be a really old grub. Is he a vampire grub or a zombie grub? Now they are all the experts. They had 100 effing years and did not discover the deception. This is just another grub. Lee Redford. Grub life is wild, bro, but you're welcome to it. Go back off onto your grubby little life there. And, um, yeah, try not to muck up my channel anymore. Thank you. Next comment comes from Epic Lights, and they say, Hi, Jason. You are so committed and so professional that even following surgery, you continue to uplift and encourage us. I wish you big medicine, a full and speedy recovery. I looked up David's book for the quantum version of recovery. He uses the word healing. I know. He uses the gerin, but I'm sure he means well. Um, thank you for those kind words. I do appreciate it. I also appreciate your membership. And as a matter of fact, most of these comments are from members. So thank you very much for your membership. Uh, heal is a good word. Uh, continuous hyphen health is, is good. Lots of different words you can use uh, for that. And by the way, Epic Lights, if you want to learn the grammar, welcome aboard. Next comment comes from D. Geezy, and they say, I'm loving all this quantum field, S-H-I-T, quantum physics, quantum healing, quantum hypnosis, quantum grammar. That's M-A-R, by the way. It's time to put a quantum ass whooping on the deceivers. Why? Why do why you want to do that? <sighs> See, it's individuals like this. I don't. I don't normally teach individuals like this. I mean, in my one-to-one -one workshops, that's why I do the, the consultations. Because folks that are aggressive and want to beat people up and want to put an ass whooping on the deceivers and, ooh, I want them to fear me when they see me coming. I don't want nothing to do with those people. Those people sort of reflect the bullying mindset, you know. I'm not a bully and... That's actually a pet peeve of mine is bullying. Um, so, yeah, I don't contract with people like this, actually. And actually, they didn't read the terms and conditions of the comments field. They would know, please don't use foul language. But like my granddad said, and including the guy that commented on the Romley video, like my granddad said, you know, the... What comes out of your mouth is a direct ref reflection of your inner condition of state, your inner being. And if you're going to use foul language like this in a forum like this, then that tells me a lot about you. Next comment comes from Shane Harrison, and they say, we are under maritime law codes. And then I said, maritime law is just another facet of the fiction system similar to common law. Next comment comes from Chris525, and they say Octogon, which is a reference to Sean Harass. Anybody who knows Sean Harass, Dr. Sean Harass, anybody who's seen his videos, if they see that word associated to it, they will say it just like I said it, Octogon, because that's the way Sean Harass says it. And then Deguizi says, we need more people like you and Mr. Miller. I'm learning and will do my part. Well, thank you very much, Deguizi. I appreciate those kind words. I'm not sure what part you're going to do, but one part you could do is actually learn the grammar. Contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop if you're serious. Please include your full correct name. D. Kyer Search says, Greetings. I really enjoy your channel. Thank you very much. I've been able to watch a number of live streams over the past year plus and some of your historic videos. On the live streams I was on, it never occurred to me to ask a question as the knowledge was so forceful, I had no question to ask. I've seen all the David Whit Miller videos I could search for on YouTube. I also watched all of Mark Criston videos. I think they mean Mark, lowercase k, Kishon, Christopher. I was able to attend a number of live streams with Mark Criston. I'm pretty sure they mean Mark, lowercase k, Kishon, colon, Christopher. 
There is no Mark Criston that I'm aware of. Mark's YouTube channel was taken down. I did not want to follow the paid subscription path. I really enjoy your videos. You are a genuine teacher. Well, thank you very much for that assessment. The value I find in your videos is the principles and the concepts of the grammar. There is less value for me to have the need to physically apply the quantum grammar to a document. I see that change as my circumstances do. Well, it's better to have and not need than need than not have. Much appreciated for your time to make these videos. My words are genuine. And my gratitude is genuine. Thank you very much for the comment and welcome aboard. And the last comment comes from Dennis Thompson and they say, Hello, Jason. In Australia now looking today at Australian stamp list being made for sale within Australia. And it looks as if I could only buy stamps with the whole number, I think they mean W-H-O-L-E, being broken down, being broken now, e.g. 120, 240, etc. I understand the reference of the $1 equals 100% ownership of document. Uh, no, I don't understand that reference. It's just a fee for freight. This doesn't construe ownership by my knowledge anyways. Should I buy say five 120 stamps so it would be five 120 equals six which would be full dollar dennis michael thompson well one solution i could offer you because i'm not familiar with i'm not in australia i don't know the ins and outs of your postal stations or your postage stamps down there but one solution would just be to order one dollar u.s stamps uh or red fox stamps uh, you can easily do that. You can easily use U.S. postage stamps of whole number denominations or pound stamps with whole number denominations. I mean, if I mail something from here to Australia, I'm using U.S. postage. So it gets there. So you can order stamps, United States stamps with uh, whole number values and use those but that's what i would do i guess just to be on the safe side great question though thank you for the comment and dennis thompson if you would like to learn correct sentence structure please watch the next 33 seconds mm -hmm.